Welcome everyone. In this video, we will be discussing bar charts as uh, an effective tool for uh, project planning. It's important to understand that projects are temporary and unique uh, sequence of tasks uh, to attain uh, certain outcomes. And uh, in this video, we'll also uh, talking about um, activity relationships. Activity is uh, a particular task uh, in a project that needs uh, resources to be completed and uh, uh, time requirement is also there uh, for completion of um, activity. On the other hand, events are uh, important and identifiable uh, uh, times uh, in uh, the life cycle of the project and uh, no resources are required uh, for events. As you can see, uh, GAN charts or bar charts uh, are uh, a visualization tool uh, to show um, project um, and activity plans. Uh, usually we have activities listed on the vertical axis and uh, the time scale for the project uh, that can be days, weeks, months, or even years are illustrated on the horizontal axis. The solid bar for each activity shows uh, the duration uh, for that. For uh, visualization purposes, we can see the planned and actual progress for different uh, tasks uh, or activities uh, on the Gantt chart. It's a very easy to read uh, method for visualization uh, and showing the status of uh, different activities and a very useful and quick uh, uh, source of information when it comes to crashing or expediting uh, project activities and also reallocation of resources uh, to different tasks. Uh, usually, uh, GAN charts uh, do not show uh, technical dependencies, but uh, on uh, some GAN charts, as you will see in uh, later slides, uh, uh, arrows or uh, those uh, dependencies can also be illustrated. Here is an example, uh, a simple project with five um, activities and two milestones. A start and finish milestones are shown uh, by a diamond sign and uh, then um, uh, we have activity A as the first activity with duration of one week then activity B which has uh, uh, dependency to activity A can be started um, at the end of uh, the first period and the duration is uh, three days activity C is also dependent to A and uh, then we have activity D, uh, which is dependent to activity B and C. This means that uh, activity D cannot be started until uh, both activities B and C have been uh, concluded uh, at the end of uh, uh, the fourth day. And finally, activity E with duration of one day and the finish uh, milestone uh, for this project, which is at the end of day seven. Here is a practice uh, example for you that can be completed in your own time. Uh, uh, we are after the completion uh, time for the project, uh, uh, which has six uh, activities in it. Um, as a hint, uh, the completion uh, date is uh, 20 days, uh, but uh, you can do the calculations in your own time and uh, validate this um, answer. Another important concept in project planning uh, is a lag. And here is an example for a concrete column. Uh, we have uh, setting the form work as the first um, activity. Then uh, the steel uh, reinforcement cage is uh, uh, placed uh, in the form work. And then we can pour the concrete. There is a period of wait uh, for the concrete to set and reach uh, the required uh, strengths. Uh, and after that, we can uh, strip the form work. The important point about activity four is that uh, it's just a wait uh, 
and no resources required to uh, complete uh, that. So instead of a, an activity, we should call uh, uh, the force item here uh, a lag. So we can illustrate this um, on a Gantt chart. And obviously, uh, we have the start milestone after that activity A with the duration of one week. Then activity B is starting immediately after A. However, activity C, which has activity A as the prerequisite, has a lag of four. It means that we need to wait for four days after finishing activity A, and then activity C can be started. Other activities, D and E, uh, have been illustrated, and the finish uh, milestone shows that the activity is, uh, the project is completed at the end of the ninth uh, week. Another uh, practice example in here, uh, a set of six uh, activities, A to F, in this uh, project, and uh, lags uh, that are uh, shown for three activities, B, C, and D, are also there, and we are after the completion time of the project. As a hint, the final answer to this is 22 days, and I leave uh, development of the workflows uh, uh, to you, and you can validate uh, this answer. is uh, a negative lag uh, and uh, we can uh, illustrate this using an example uh, of baking a cake. Uh, in the first uh, activity we need to get the mixture ready and it takes about uh, 30 minutes and uh, the second activity is uh, preheating the oven uh, for a duration of uh, uh, 10 minutes. A good point uh, about activity two is that we don't need to wait uh, until uh, the first activity is uh, concluded or finished until we start the oven. So we can do uh, parallel works in here and uh, save some time. This is exactly what lead means uh, and uh, we can have uh, uh, another example. A practice example in here. The negative values uh, are lead and uh, we have them for two activities and we have positive uh, values of lag for other two activities and we are after the completion time of the project. The final answer here is uh, 19 days. Now that we have uh, talked about Gantt charts, we can uh, start our discussion about activity relationships and uh, uh, one of the important uh, relationships that we can consider is a star to a star. Here is an example for painting a house. We need to remove the old paint uh, as the first activity, then sanding and preparation of the surfaces as the second activities, and the third one is uh, painting itself. It's uh, important that uh, uh, understand for different uh, rooms in uh, a house, uh, these activities have a start-to-start -start relationship. So uh, this means we remove the paint uh, first, and then we can consider a lag. And after starting uh, that first activity, activity two can be started. And with the lag, again, it can have a start-to-start -start relationship with painting. So we don't need to remove the old paint for all um, zones of the house and then complete sand and prep for all zones and uh, then do the painting for everywhere. This is a start to restart relationship between the activities with a reasonable gap that we can consider. Here is an example, a simple project uh, with five activities and there are two start to start uh, relationships with a gap. The uh, finish milestone shows that the completion time for this project is uh, at the seventh, at the end of the seventh uh, uh, time unit. Another practice example for you to complete. Uh, there are start to start relationships and lags uh, for uh, different activities. 
and uh, the final answer to this uh, is uh, 23. So you can develop the workflow and uh, validate this answer yourself. Next uh, activity uh, relationship is uh, finish to finish, and that's where uh, the ending of uh, two activities are directly connected. We can have a start to uh, finish uh, relationships in some instances as well. The example here is the training uh, courses and when we have co-requisites uh, for different uh, units of that training. So you cannot complete a unit as an example until you have started uh, a co-requisite and enrolled uh, in that one. So that's how a start to finish uh, relationship works. Another practice example for you uh, to develop the workflow and reach the final answer of uh, 20 units of time as the uh, completion uh, time for the project. To wrap up, uh, we can consider different uh, advantages for using Gantt charts. Uh, they uh, are uh, easy uh, to understand and uh, they contain a good amount of information. They need updating, but uh, uh, often very easy to maintain, and uh, they can be a very valid and uh, a strong um, visualization tool <coughs> to show the current state of the project. On the downside, uh, there are a couple of disadvantages. For complex projects, uh, uh, it is difficult to develop the Gantt charts, and they uh, become pages and pages of uh, uh, documentation and uh, graphs. Assumption we make uh, for Gantt chart is that the production rate um, and the number of resources we require uh, for different activities during the life uh, of the activity is often constant. To recap, uh, we talked about bar charts as um, a way of um, project planning and a, a strong tool. Um, and different activity relationships with the examples that are uh, covered in this video. Thanks everyone for your attention and I look forward to having uh, our future uh, videos and the discussions about uh, project management.